I'm here with Carola Schoenlieb, the director of the Cantab Capital Institute for the Mathematics of Information here at the University of Cambridge. Carola, what is the Cantab Capital Institute for the Mathematics of Information? So it's an institute that is hosted here in the Centre for Mathematical Sciences. It's a collaboration between the Applied Mathematics and Theoretical Physics Department and the Pure Mathematics and uh, Mathematical Statistics Department. And it's really built all around the development of mathematical theory and methodology to understand how to extract information from data. It was uh, um, uh, built out of a very generous donation we received from a hedge fund here in Cambridge, uh, Cantop Capital Partners, and it has launched uh, in March uh, last year. Excellent. And what can you tell us what is the mathematics of information? So we are surrounded by all kinds of technology nowadays in our modern world that is um, collecting, transmitting, manipulating data. But it's not the data that is important, it's the information that is contained in the data. And this is something we need to understand how to extract this information and what to do with this information in the end. Um, mathematics is really the driving factor to do that. While interestingly enough, historically in the last century, mathematics has been really the driver of uh, the physics revolution. Now it's easy to believe that this is, that is the driver in this data revolution, in this, in this revolution of understanding information in data. Being it uh, answering questions about um, what kind of information can I extract from the data, uh, what are the limitations of the data, how certain or uncertain can I be about the information I extract, and how long does it take me to extract this information, to compute information from data? Does it just take a second? Does it take minutes, hours, or will I never be able to do that? So these are the questions that we are trying to answer. Corella, why is the institute based in a maths department? So the name, of course, already says it. It's the mathematics of information. So why is mathematics important? And why is it important that we have it in this broad context of applied and pure mathematics? Um, the exciting thing for me in mathematics of information is that it is nurtured by quite a wide variety of different mathematical theories and applications. Um, think about one, of, uh, one example out of my own research is image denoising where the main aim is that what you're recording is a noisy version of an image you're interested in in the end. So the, ma the, main, uh, the main task in this case is to uh, understand how to differentiate noise from the actual content in the image. So when you think about that, noise is usually random. And so what we need to understand and formalize it is probability and statistics. On the other hand, when you think about the image contents, how can we characterize those? Then um, uh, contents in an image uh, can be well described uh, by, geometric, um, by geometric concepts. Um, think about chair, chairs or uh, tables or houses or things like this. Um, as well as uh, some repetitive uh, structures, uh, such as textures or patterns. Think of grass or water, the surface of water, or something like this. Um, and then, of course, the color information as well. So, when talking about this, all the fields that are involved in order to describe these different components uh, are, again, multiple ones. So there is uh, geometry, there is differential equations, uh, there is harmonic analysis. Um, so all of those uh, are added to all the same problem. And then, of course, in the end, once you have understood how to characterize noise and how to characterize image, the image contents, um, then you have to understand 
um, how to compute this, how to compute this differentiation between noise and image contents. And this is usually then turns into questions in numerical analysis and optimization, where you have to understand how to do these things on the computer, how to actually turn this into an algorithm that works in an acceptable amount of time. Yeah. So, Carola, the research at the Institute, can you give us an idea of what sort of applications you're focusing on? Right, so this is an interesting question because I think people, different uh, researchers in the Institute will probably answer this question quite differently. The reason being that uh, part of them are directly working on problems are working on problems that are directly connected to a particular application and so they can list you several applications they're working on. Um, but other people might work on quite generic uh, theory, mathematical theory and methodology uh, that is not directly um, connected to a particular application but that works more on a broad class of problems. Um, so if I give you an example for that, um, uh, I could uh, pick uh, the, the example of tomography. So tomography, uh, tomographic imaging, is an imaging technique that works by sectioning. Um, and it is used in various different contexts, uh, from uh, clinical practice, uh, medical imaging, uh, using that to look into the inside of the body without cutting it open, um, in material sciences, uh, for instance, to look at materials and the structure of materials, um, in uh, seismic imaging, as well as atmospheric sensing, in order to uh, look underneath the earth and as well as up in the atmosphere to measure certain quantities there. So it's used in a quite a variety of contexts and that is also reflected in the types of tomography that are used. There is not one tomography method. Magnetic resonance tomography, for instance, so this type of tomography works with using for the sectioning, using, using um, a strong magnetic field as well as radio waves in order to, um, in order to um, measure the image density uh, made up of water molecules in the body by, um, by picking up uh, the Fourier transform, samples of the Fourier transform of this image density. So this is sectioning using a strong magnetic field. And in this case, the measurement, the data that is being used um, are samples of the Fourier transform of the image density of the water molecules that in the end the doctor, for instance, is interested in looking at. So here uh, the main mathematical problem is to um, reconstruct the image from its Fourier samples. Another example is computer tomography, which uh, slices, which sec sections the body using x-rays. So in this case, an x-ray is sent into the body with a particular energy, and at the other end, the energy response is recorded, that is, the energy coming in, and then uh, how much energy is accumulated or lost while traveling through the body. And that is what is being recorded. And this can be formalized mathematically as saying you are taking a line integral through the body, through the density of certain uh, materials, tissues, through the body. And so in this case, the mathematical problem is reconstructing an image from samples from line integrals. And again, this is a different mathematical problem. And then I could go on. There are various different examples of tomography used in different types of scenarios. There is positron emission tomography, there is optical tomography, there is electron tomography, there is photoacoustic tomography. And in all of these cases, this relationship between the data being measured and the image that you would like to compute from it is different. And so the mathematics are also different that you need to understand, that you need to use to analyze and compute the solution in the end for all of these different types of applications. So this is an example where mathematics of information is directly fed by a particular application. But then there are also uh, approaches, there are also problems which are 
not which are, which are developed a bit remotely from a particular application. And again, when um, and again uh, when I talk about tomography, um, some questions in tomography, like this question with the line integrals, you can consider this actually as as a as a separate mathematical problem, not directly thinking about computer tomography. And this question actually has been asked uh, in the last century uh, by Radon, who was an Austrian mathematician, um, uh, asking the question, can a function be reconstructed from its line integrals? And actually that's also why the representation of a function in terms of its line integrals is called the Radon transform, going back to Radon. And Radon has asked this question before computer tomography has been invented. So this has been long before this has happened. And so certain mathematical questions um, and certain theories are being developed very often remotely from a particular application. So, <clears throat> so is that, that sounds like quite an interesting illustration of those two perspectives you were talking about. So we have this application specific one where for the different types of tomography you need different types of mathematics to bring it together. But then you have this example where Radon, you know, over a hundred years ago developed some mathematics to compute a function from its line integrals. And, and is that now the thing that is used to compute some of the images from this tomography data? So interestingly enough, um, it's being used now, but when computer tomography was invented and people thought about how to reconstruct an image from these measurements that they can do, they didn't know about Radon. They didn't know about the Radon transform at all. And so these first approaches have been developed completely um, independently of what Radon has already been working on. So I think this is another good uh, motivation uh, for building an institute like the Cantor Capital Institute. We don't want that to happen again. So we would like ma mathematical theorists, let's say, uh, discuss from the very early stages uh, of the problems they're thinking about with people who are working on particular types of applications. Because then this exchange can happen uh, earlier and it can accelerate all the following developments. So, Carola, what, what do you personally think is one of the really exciting areas in um, the maths of information? What are you looking forward to seeing the Institute contribute to over the next 10 years? So there are many things, I think, that uh, are exciting to look at. There are so many questions that are now arising in this field of mathematics of information. For me personally, to give an example from my own research, um, or from my own research field, let's say. One of the things that I and many other colleagues are currently quite excited about and interested in is how to combine um, what we have very much traditionally done, um, uh, uh, model-based imaging, with uh, developments in machine learning. So with model-based imaging, I mean um, a little bit connected to what I've said about image denoising at the beginning, um, the approach where you start out with a set of images and you start out with a particular question, with a task you want to solve for these images. For instance, denoising or segmentation. You are interested in particular um, objects in the image that you would like to uh, identify. So how people like me are usually approaching this is that we are uh, trying to formalize, understand what are, what, what are the structures, the features that make up these components in the image I'm interested in and how can I formalize them to build a model that then is able to identify faces, for instance. So this is the model-based approach. Um, and that is very specific to the type of question you're asking and to the type of imaging data that you're looking at. Machine learning, on the other hand, starts out with a generic model <coughs> and then adapts, calibrates the model 
to the images. It, the, the images themselves are calibrating the model. So it's learned, that's why it's machine learning, the model is learned from the images. So these are two quite different attacks to the same problem. And I think the exciting thing is to combine the two. Both of those approaches have their pluses and minuses. And their combination in terms of, well, we don't want to forget everything that we have invested in imaging research, understanding and formalizing structures and images. But on the other hand, we would like to take the opportunity that is being developed in machine learning to adapt some of these ideas to the images themselves. So something like adaptive expert models is uh, a topic that I'm very much interested in. Well, we look forward to hearing more from the Institute over the next few years. Thank you very much. Thank you.